Welcome to the big island of Hawaii, here in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Um, thanks for joining me today. I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey. I'm here with a group of students uh, exploring the geology of the island, and I thought I'd put together some videos to show you some of the unique features that we're exploring here on our trip. So if you haven't been to the big island, um, this might be a real treat for you. Or if maybe you've been to the big island, have just gotten into geology, or maybe haven't been to some of these locations, this could be uh, quite a treat for you. So we're looking from here uh, at lavas that came down off this steep slope. We're at an elevation of about 2,000 feet. I'll put the location um, under the video description. Looking out towards the Pacific here, and these lava flows are from a, the year 1800 to 1801, so about a little over 220 or so years ago, Lavas from this volcano, Hualalai, one of the five volcanoes that make up the Big Island, uh, came down these steep slopes and all the, went all the way out to the ocean there. This particular site here that we're looking at uh, has some really unique features. We can see all the students over here uh, investigating this lava channel. And one of the reasons we stopped here is this lava flow actually has pieces of uh, lower crustal material, very mafic, different colored uh, rocks that were embedded and entrained in the lava flow as it poured out and went to the ocean. And we call those features um, xenoliths. So what we'll do is we'll head down into the channel. We'll look at, at some of these xenoliths up close. Also look at some of the drip features. These lava channels uh, in places actually roofed over and formed lava tube systems. But on the sides of the lava channel, you, we can actually see some interesting drip features and some interesting textures that um, developed when this thing was molten and active. Uh, some of the research on this eruption suggests that it was um, a very high velocity eruption. The lava was erupting at a high discharge rate and was so rapid that it was able to entrain these large xenoliths that I'll show you here in a second and transport them down the lava channel. So up here we have these nice smooth pohoihoi surfaces, these ropes of lava that make the walking really easy. This indicates the lava was higher temperature um, and relatively low viscosity. Let's head down into the lava channel though and look at these xenoliths which are just really spectacular. Maybe we'll talk to one of the students too so they're not too scared. Jump down here. So you can see here the actual um, axis of the lava channel coming down this way. Again, these are all about 220 years old. And then let's head up to these up here and then we'll head down where the students are. So spectacular drip features here. You can see where the lava just dripped off the walls of the channel as the lava supply was waning and the lava channel itself was draining out these just beautiful little drip features all along here. And then the main thing we're looking at, the sort of star of the show, if you will, are these. These are the xenoliths, these deep crustal xenoliths, these green chunks of rock that were carried in the lava system. Xenolith, which is spelled X-E-N-O-L-I-T-H, uh, means foreign rock fragments. So xeno means foreign, lith means rock. And we can see these olivine rich, um, what we would call an ultramafic. Olivine is found in the basalt, but usually uh, in association with a lot of other minerals as well. But these are ultramafic particles, just m almost dominantly made out of olivine. Some of them actually have some black chunks of pyroxene or augite in here as well. So just really cool when you think about the story these rocks have coming up from the lower crust and being transported down um, with this lava flow. A couple more over here. 
Uh, and then we'll head down where the students are, where they're a little bit bigger. So, what'd you find, Kaylee? Well, it was passed down the line, and I don't really know if it's anything. Let's see what you have there. So, oh, so very I think, fragile. I think these are pieces of the xenoliths. You can see some of the crystals in there. Um, see some of the, the cleavage planes of faces that reflect the light. So I think that's some white plage and some um, black augite, and that's maybe and was it found on the ground or was it already broken up or? Um. Well, I accidentally broke it. Oh. It was, okay. Yeah, yeah I so grabbed it and it just split. <laughs> that's a little chunk of the xenolith there. Very cool. Nice, because yeah, and mainly in places we see them pretty, pretty embedded. So we'll head down this channel with these irregular rocks. Footing here is really tricky. And make our way to this other little batch of xenoliths. These ones down here tend to be a little bit larger overall than some of the ones we looked at back down there. And then there's another exposure along the highway that we found. Um, but a little bit more noisy with the cars going by. Again, looking up at just the incredible lava drip features as the lava coated these walls as the channel was um, waning in volcanic activity and the lava supply was um, dropping. The channel was left with just lava dripping down the walls rather than flowing down the center as much. But it coated the rocks with this brown coating and then you can actually see places where the lava dripped from above and then hit a ledge below to create some of these odd shapes and patterns here. Um, just these interesting little like tubes or blobs where the lava dripped down from above um, and made some of these interesting patterns. Again, another place here where we can see where it dripped down there. Got a couple of students down here. Oh, you're all hunkered down in a cave. Oh, we found something. <laughs> um, we have a question. Okay, let me let me quickly film this little part and then well go ahead and ask. Let's do it right here well, on the film. There's a weird reflective like really I don't inclusion here. I don't know what it is. Is there it doesn't like look okay. mica maybe that it's like super Probably shiny. not mica. I don't know how to do it. You might have to look at it because I can't. I don't it, know. So it could be another inclusion of. Right here. And it's big. It's like okay. this big. I'll come down there and look at it then. Oh, yeah. So there we have a couple. I'm just going to throw this up here. here so come look at it. Here's one of the bigger ones right here. Um, so some more of these olivine rich inclusions. And then let's get down here to the mystery rock. Where's it at? Oh, um, this one. Oh, let's see. Yeah, so it's definitely an inclusion. Probably a little hard to see on the camera. Um, hard to say with the lighting. I mean, it's probably another one of these same xenoliths, but I can't tell exactly what minerals it's dominated by. There's not quite as much olivine in that one. There's another one right here. Sticking up, so yeah, just this whole little ledge, lots of pieces falling down, and then we have these sharps lava stalactite drip features up above. So, very cool. Okay, we'll go ahead and sign off from this location here on the northwest rift zone of Hualalai with our field geology class, uh, investigating some of the Xenoliths and lava drip features we see here. Thanks for joining us.